The second thing that they ask us to do sometimes is, is to find delta x. That again is very straightforward because you already have ux, we just calculated that. The time, we actually use the total time because to go from there to there we have to use the total time. So we can actually calculate uh, you know, delta x. Calculating delta y, if you have a look at this formula, is ut plus a half a t squared. Now to calculate delta y, we already have the time. But in this case, the time that we will actually use will be only this one. Not the time multiplied by 2, but only this time. Why? Because delta y is from there to there. So we only need the time from there to there, which is actually just this much. So we can actually put that in this equation. We have ui, which is here. We have the time, which we found. Ay is negative 9.8. Again, it's going up. Acceleration is pulling it down. And then we have t squared. So we can actually find delta y as well. And these are most of the things that they will generally ask you for a projectile motion question. Now, this was just a simple uh, question. The advanced questions, what they do is they do something a little bit more complicated. So how about we look at you know a harder question. Again, things are only hard if you don't understand how to do them. And if you do understand how to do them, then they're actually quite straightforward. So let's have a look at a case where we don't launch the projectile from the ground, but we launch it from a certain height. So let's just say I launch the projectile from a cliff. Yeah? And the cliff is 100 meters high. Okay? And, you know, um, again, we'll use the same numbers. Let's just say I launch it at 40 at an angle of 30 degrees. All right? And I ask you now um, for different things. You know, all right, let's just say I ask you to find the time of flight. Delta X and Delta Y. Yeah? Um, actually, I don't even ask you to find Delta Y, and I just ask you to calculate the range, calculate how far this projectile will hit from the base of the cliff, and also calculate how long it will take to get there. Now, there's a few ways of doing these questions. One is to split up the projectile into two parts. We could do what we did previously and split up the projectile into two parts. Consider this motion from there to there, and then that motion from there to there. But bear this in mind, that these are not symmetrical anymore, so you can't just calculate this and then double the time, because this is not symmetrical. So you could do it this way, um, but in this tutorial we won't do it like that, because that's actually a longer process. We can do it another way, um, which is you know a little bit smarter. So, so let's actually think about it, right? I want to find time. Um, can I use the first one? So just walking through this, do I have the final velocity over here? Uh, no. This one doesn't have a time in it. This one has a time in it, but it needs delta x. I do not have delta x. This one has time in it, and it has delta y. And this one has time in it as, uh, actually this one doesn't have time in it as well. So really, I could only use this, this, and that. I do not have um, the final velocity. I do not have delta x. Do I have delta y? If you think about this carefully, delta y is actually 100. In fact, it's not 100, it's negative 100. Why? Because delta y is the displacement in the y direction, right? So if you consider this as just a normal coordinate system, so this is the origin over here, the projectile is actually from, from this point over here to that point over there, the projectile has actually had a displacement in the y direction of 100. And in fact, it's actually gone down. Because this is our origin over here, you know, you have it's our x axis. The projectile has actually gone down. So we're taking down as negative and we're taking up as positive. So we actually get delta y as being negative. If we do that, then we can actually just substitute it straight in here. And we get this. We get negative 100 equals ui, and as I said, ui is going to be what? 
All right, our initial velocity was 40, so u of i is 40 sine 30 degrees. So we get 40 sine 30 degrees t plus a half acceleration. Which way is the acceleration going? Acceleration is going down. So we said up to be positive, acceleration is going down, so acceleration will be negative, 9.8 um, t squared. We simplify this. And we get this minus 4.9 t squared. Right? I can take everything on this side and I get this. 4.9 t squared minus 40 sine 30 degrees t minus 100 equals to 0. Now to solve this, I would just use the quadratic formula, which is minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac on 2a. And I can sub in the values, this is obviously A, this is obviously B, so, so this is A, 40 sine 30 is B, and this is C. I can sub it in the quadratic formula and I'll get two values. One value has to be negative. If you get both values as positive or both values are negative, you've done something wrong. So one value will be negative and obviously time cannot be negative. Um, so you ignore that value and you use the other value and this will then give you the time. The time it will give you will be actually from there to there, it should be the total time. So you don't need to double, you don't need to do anything else. And then once you have the time, you can just do delta x equals ux t. You have the time, you have ux which is 40 plus 30 and you can solve this question. So again, as we can see, projectile motion questions Oh, actually not that difficult. All you need to do is understand a few basics and then practice a whole bunch of questions and you should be good with it. That's all we're going to do tonight. Thank you.